we finally have a Resurgence map on Warzone 2. But Resurgence gameplay on Ashika Island is a bit different than Rebirth and Fortune's Keep because Warzone 2 has a lot of features that did not exist in Warzone 1, which means new ways to play the Resurgence map. So whether you are a seasoned Rebirth sweat that was constantly 1v4ing and dropping 20s and 30s, or you are new to the game. This video will help you level up your gameplay and make your experience on Ashika way better and way smoother. So let's start off with all the new tips that did not exist on the old Resurgence maps. Tip number one, land in areas that have buy stations. After the money buff that we got in season two, you can start off all your matches with a huge advantage by getting your loadout weapons early on. And each one costs 2,500, which is cheap and easy to find. So go get your weapon and enjoy clearing the area that you landed in with ease as well as having a great start to your match. Tip number two, keep around 5 to 6k of money on you and don't use it until you die. Let's say you lost your fight. Your loot and your loadout are not safe. In Rebirth or Fortune's Keep, that would have been a problem. But in Ashika, if you kept that money on you, after you die, you don't have to land back on your loot or the loadout. Just go to any random buy station, get your loadout weapons, and there you go. You have a full reset as if nothing happened. Tip number three, start your match off with a most wanted contract. Most wanted contracts changed a lot in Warzone 2, where before, you just had to wait the entire time till the contract is done. As for now, if you open a crate, a bag, or finish somebody, the timer will go down. We managed to finish a 3 minute most wanted contract in less than a minute. It's literally free money at this point. Tip number 4. Stop stacking plates in your backpack. For some reason on Ashika Island, plates are as rare as Call of Duty releasing a fully finished game at launch. Anyways, my point is, I keep seeing a lot of players fully stacking their backpacks with plates, which is not a bad thing to do. But instead of doing that and losing all that space in your inventory for just one thing, stack armor boxes instead. Each three plates take up one slot. An armor box has six plates, but if you stack the armor box, you're saving an extra slot which you can use for a UAV, a precision, an ammo box, or anything else. My main way of playing with that tactic is three plates in my main inventory and three in my backpack. And the rest, if it's gonna be plates, it's gonna be armor boxes in that way. Tip number five. How to get more than one UAV per buy station. Warzone 2 introduced a new feature where each buy station is limited to one UAV only. And that's also the case on Ashika Island. But what they don't tell you is during a fire sale you will get three UAVs per buy station and they are all at a discounted price of 2800. And on Ashika Island, a fire sale happens every single match during the third circle at the one minute mark. So keep around 8k to buy all the UAVs and make sure that you and your team position yourselves around the buy station during the third circle. Tip number six, how to redeploy your teammates faster. Now the old ways of doing that from Rebirth and Fortune Skeep still exist, which are downing people, finishing people, buying stuff at the buy station, or opening crates. But there's two new features that have been added. The first one is breaking someone's armor for some reason. And the second one is called on the go, which is basically as long as you're moving, the timer on your teammates redeploy time will go down by two seconds. So all you have to do is make sure that you're moving non-stop and if you're trapped in a room or a small area, just run around the room. If you're still watching till now, I just want to say thank you first of all. And if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit that like button as it will help me out a lot. Second of all, I want to ask you, what are you struggling with in Warzone? Let me know down in the comments so I can help you out and make a video about it. And if you don't like the video, also let me know down in the comments so we can work on that. Now for the tips that we can take from the old resurgence maps. Tip number seven, this is a resurgence map, which means that every time you finish somebody, you will see a ping on the mini map of where the remaining teammates are. Make sure that you always look at the mini map after you get a finish so you can know what type of information you have and whether you want to fall back or keep pushing based on what you got. Tip number eight, use throwing knives as much as possible. Using a throwing knife finishes instantly saves your ammo, can be picked up instantly, and because it finishes instantly, that means you will get information instantly on where the rest of the team is. And with the new backpack system, you don't have to worry about using syntaxes or drill charges because you can always keep those in your backpack and use them when needed. Tip number nine, farm a team. If you come across a team that is a little bit botty, you know, kind of beginners, and they insist on landing back at the same spot every single time, just keep farming them and leave one guy alive, wait like 5 to 10 seconds when their teammates come back. Keep repeating that over and over. Literally free kills. Tip number 10. I really don't want to say this tip. Listen, if this was a kill race or you happen to be in the area, then we're cool. But please don't be that player that does this all the game, every single game. Tip number 10 is camp loadouts. If you see a bunch of loadouts out in the open, 
and you have a chance to take cover which is either a building with high ground and vision on them or some bushes or cover nearby then make sure you camp in a spot where the enemy can see you while you're dropping down and you're guaranteed to get a few free kills. I know you guys are mad at me for the last tip I just said, so let me make it up to you with a bonus tip. Let's talk about drones. Is the counter UAV considered a drone? Now, as much as I'm tempted to shoot every single counter UAV in the sky, I actually love when enemies call it in because whoever called it will have the drone spawn right on top of them. So that means now I know where an enemy is in the area. And if I don't have a UAV to pop, there's no reason for me to shoot it at all. I'll just approach wherever that drone is silently and search for that team over there. As for the two other drones, with the rarity of UAVs unless there's a fire sale, it's really important that you know who's around you and how many are around you, so you know how to move or when to move. And if you can't find a UAV, use either the recon drone or the bomb drone. Not only they will scan people for you, but they will also show you where they are even if they're ghosted. And if you use thermal vision, it'll make things way easier. Now, what makes the recon drone special is that you can use it multiple times without having it destroyed. So you can leave it in a certain area for it to be passively scanned and any enemy that walks in its line of sight is automatically marked for you and you will get an audio ping for it as well. As for the bomb drone, you can only use it once. If you'd exit it, that's it, it's over. And what makes it special? Well, it's a bomb drone, it goes boom. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helped you out a lot. Next up, we're going to be talking about basic and advanced movement tricks that will make you say movement in Modern Warfare and Warzone 2 is still there. And if you don't believe me, you'll see it in the next video for yourself. So make sure you hit that sub and I'll see you on the next one.